Please be aware that the comments, views, opinions shared on this podcast are not meant to diagnose a medical problem and or legal problem. If you do have a medical problem or legal problem, kindly contact a professional. Welcome to An Apple A Day, a podcast, a resource, a community. Share your experiences and learn from others as we overcome barriers and learn to live a happy, healthy life with a disability. Welcome to the community. Here's your host, Jimmy Apple. And here we are. Welcome to another episode of An Apple A Day. I'm your host, Jimmy Apple. Hey, how you feeling today? How's everything going? You feeling good? You feeling better than you did yesterday? Excellent. You can't ask for better than that. Hey, before we start, let me remind you. An Apple a Day is brought to you by www.famousapple.com. Famousapple.com is the home site for this podcast. So if you get a minute, go over there, check it out. You'll be glad you did. That's www.famousapple.com. And while you're out on the web, check out our group. We're over at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash disabled living. Name of the page is living with a disability. There's a lot of conversations going on there. There's polls. Get involved. I'm always over there. So we can chat. We can talk. We can discuss things. Got to make it a point. Get over there. Visit us. All you got to do is register on the page. Nobody takes your information, does anything with it. You just got to register to make sure that we're not getting uh, trolls and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So how you doing? You're doing your exercises, you're taking your medication the way you're supposed to? Excellent. You can't ask for better than that. Hey, are you still getting your food delivered to the house? You're still socially distancing yourself from other people? It's important. It's important. Our immune systems, remember that, people. Our immune systems are compromised. Just by being disabled, just by taking medication, our immune systems are are compromised. So you got to be careful. Hey, We got a really good one today for you. A lot of information to pass on. I have an update from Social Security for people who still, believe it or not, there's still people who haven't received the economic stimulus payment yet. So I got an update on that. You know, you hear people in the news that are saying the government can't prohibit social gatherings. Well, I got some news on that from Fine Law I want to share with you. I also have information on can you refuse to go back to work and continue to collect unemployment if your job opens up again. There's been people talking about that and there's another tool to help fight the coronavirus that I want to pass on with you and it's an everyday tool you have it in your house so that's something to look at but we're going to jump right into this because there's so much going on today and I want to share it with you. All right so sit back Relax, and let's get started here. Can you believe that there's still people waiting on the economic impact payments? They haven't received them yet? I can't believe that. But I have a report here from Social Security that they wanted to pass along. And the name of the report is Economic Impact Payments for People with a Representative Payee and People Living in U.S. Territories. Social Security has issued an update today about COVID-19 economic impact payments to certain groups of Social Security and SSI beneficiaries. Beneficiaries who have their regular monthly payments managed for them by another person called a representative payee will begin receiving their economic impact payments from the IRS in late May. Special rules apply to beneficiaries living in U.S. territories, the American Samoa, Guam, Puerto Rico, the Northern Mariana Islands, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. In general, the tax authority in each territory, not the IRS, will pay the economic impact payments to eligible residents based on information the IRS will provide to the territories. It is anticipated that beneficiaries in the territories could begin receiving their economic impact payment in early June. The Social Security Administration has been working with the IRS to provide the necessary information about Social Security and SSI beneficiaries in order to automate and expedite the economic impact payments, said Andrew Saul, Commissioner of Social Security. 
While millions of our beneficiaries have already received their economic impact payments from the IRS, we continue to work hard for those beneficiaries who are awaiting their payment from the IRS. For additional information about payments to beneficiaries with their representative payees, please visit the Economic Impact Payments section of our COVID-19 webpage. For the territories, people should contact their local tax authority with questions about these payments. Please note, their websites may use the terms economic payment or stimulus payment. The territories are American Samoa, Guam, Puerto Rico, Northern Mariana Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands. The eligibility requirements and other information about economic impact payments can be found at the IRS Economic Impact Payment Information Center. In addition, please continue to visit the IRS coronavirus webpage for its latest information. Social Security will continue to update the agency's COVID-19 webpage with additional information. So there you have it. If you haven't got your payment yet, it's still coming. <laughs> it's still coming. But check it out. You know, that's your money. So don't let it fly by. Our next thing that we're going to be talking about is there's a new weapon in the toolbox to fight the coronavirus. And you probably have it in your house. I think everybody has, has it in their house at one time or another, if not at all the time. But we're going to talk about that next. So sit back, relax. All right, what's the first thing you do in the morning when you wake up? I know me, I go into the bathroom, I take care of some business, then I usually gargle. I usually wash my mouth out, then I brush my teeth. But did you know that by washing your mouth out and gargling, you may be starting to prevent COVID-19 transmission? Did you know that? I have an article here. It says mouthwash could prevent COVID-19 transmission, scientists say. Could, though. It doesn't say it does. It just says it could. It says mouthwash has the potential to protect against COVID-19 infection by killing the coronavirus before it can infect human cells, according to a new report. Coronaviruses belong to a class of enveloped viruses, meaning they are covered by a fatty layer that is vulnerable to certain chemicals. A team of international researchers say mouthwash could destroy the outermost layer or the envelope of the virus, preventing the replication in the mouth and throat. The scientists say that there's an urgent need to test the effectiveness of mouthwash in trials, although there is currently no chemical evidence that it would be successful. The World Health Organization has already said there is no evidence that using mouthwash will protect you from the infection with the new coronavirus. The study authors do not say that the current commercially available mouthwash prevents COVID-19, but further research into mouthwash chemicals can be beneficial. Well, the way I look at that, and I'm just saying, I'm not a scientist, believe me. You know I'm not a scientist and I'm not a doctor. But the way I look at it, anything that might be helpful, I try. So I stock up on Listerine. I wash my mouth out. I, I gargle and rinse my mouth out at least three, four times a day. It can't hurt, right? It can't hurt. Whatever you can do to, to combat this virus, whatever you can do, you do it. Now, here's the thing, though. To combat the virus, they say you use a hand sanitizer that has at least... 60% alcohol in it. If you use Listerine, Listerine only has 20% alcohol, so it's not going to do anything against the virus. It'll keep your mouth smelling fresh, but you know what? It'll take away some of the other germs that are in your mouth, so it can only help. It's, a, it's something to put in that toolbox to fight uh, the germs. It, we got to do whatever we can do to try and stay healthy, you know what I mean? Now, I have something else here from the WHO, from the World Health Organization. And there's so many lies. There's so many myths out there. So the WHO put out this list of coronavirus myth busters. And I just want to share this with you. There are currently no drugs licensed for the treatment or the prevention of COVID-19. Okay? Very important. There are no drugs. Adding pepper to your soup or other meals does not prevent or cure COVID-19. COVID-19 is not transmitted through house flies. Spraying and introducing bleach or other disinfectant into your body will not protect you against COVID-19 and can be dangerous. 
Drinking methanol, ethanol, or bleach does not prevent or cure COVID-19 and can be extremely dangerous. 5G mobile networks do not spread COVID-19. Exposing yourself to the sun or to temperatures higher than 25 degrees Celsius does not prevent coronavirus disease, COVID-19. You can recover from coronavirus disease, COVID-19. Catching the new coronavirus does not mean you will have it for life. Being able to hold your breath for 10 seconds or more without coughing or feeling discomfort does not mean you are free from the coronavirus disease, COVID-19, or any other lung disease for that matter. Drinking alcohol does not protect you from COVID-19 and can be dangerous. The new coronavirus cannot be transmitted through mosquito bites. Hand dryers, hot bath, cold weather, or snow are not effective in killing the coronavirus. Ultraviolet UV lamps should not be used to disinfect hands or other areas of your skin. Thermal scanners cannot detect COVID-19. Vaccines against pneumonia do not protect you against the new coronavirus. There is no evidence that regularly rinsing the nose with saline or eating garlic has protected people from infection with the new coronavirus. Antibiotics do not work against the viruses, only bacteria. To date, there is no specific medicine recommended to prevent or treat the new coronavirus. For more information, you can visit the World Health Organization website. All right? I just wanted to share that with you. So, mouthwash isn't going to cure it, but it's something you can use. It'll keep your mouth smelling fresh. And it'll clean the other germs that are in your mouth. But stay away from the myths out there. Okay? Don't fall for it all. And you know what? Here's some, here's some news that you're really going to want to know about. Can the government prohibit you from social gathering? Is the summer of 2020 canceled? Hmm, that's coming up. So sit back, relax, and let's move on to the next topic here. We turn on the news and we see people like Tommy Laren running around telling everybody how the government is squashing their constitutional rights. Because they're saying you have to lock down and you can't open businesses. Well, here's a question. Can the government prohibit social gatherings during COVID-19? According to fine law, here's the answers. The short answer is yes, the government can and is prohibiting social gatherings in many areas of the United States right now in response to the global coronavirus pandemic. But the government's powers are not absolute and some areas of the country are beginning to ease up restrictions on certain types of gatherings. Is the summer of 2020 canceled? If you're wondering if summer of 2020 is canceled, you are not alone. With graduations around the corner as well as wedding season, Father's Day, festivals, sports, 4th of July, boating, and other summer recreation, Americans want to know how limited their summer plans will be thanks to COVID-19 restrictions. Ultimately, restrictions in place this summer will depend on your state's laws, and particularly if there's an executive order such as a stay-at-home or shelter-in-place order in effect. State governments have the power to order people to stay home and businesses to close based on the state constitution, statutes, or regulations. Some states grant cities and towns the same authority, allowing them to take their own actions. If there is a stay-at-home or shelter-in-place order in effect, you may be prohibited from leaving your house unless it's to engage in permissible activities like getting groceries, exercising, going to your job, or caring for relatives. Under these terms, a social gathering of any size would likely not be permitted. Most states are working with police to enforce the stay-at-home orders, but tickets and arrests are only taking place in extreme cases. Are stay-at-home orders constitutional? There's been frustration and, yes, even protests in response to stay-at-home orders in many parts of the country, with some people questioning the state's rights to restrict citizens' movements. Some point to the Constitution and its protection of citizens' rights to associate, travel, and assemble, and the fact that the U.S. Constitution supersedes state law. It is the courts that decide if a government order violates the Constitution, either on its face, which argues that the law in its entirety is unconstitutional, or as applied, 
which argues that the way the order affects a particular person is unconstitutional. The strict scrutiny test would likely be applied, which would require the challenge law to be narrowly tailored to further a compelling government interest. In other words, are the restrictions being placed on an individual's freedoms unnecessarily? Lawsuits have already been filed in many jurisdictions on this very question, and so far at least one has been successful. On May 13th, the Western Supreme Court ruled that the state's stay-at-home law was unlawful and overturned. The lawsuit was filed by the Republican lawmakers in the state, and the decision was drew attention. Other rulings had declared the constitutional liberties are not absolute and that stay-at-home orders have involved necessary, albeit disruptive, restrictions. It is important to keep in mind that the situation is fluid, so stay-at-home orders will have to be adjusted based on the changing public health threats of the coronavirus pandemic in order to remain narrowly tailored to further compelling government interests. States begin rolling back stay-at-home orders. As stay-at-home orders are slowly eased up through a country, the issue of what is allowed and what is not allowed will depend entirely on where you live. Many states have unveiled plans that roll back stay-at-home orders and reopen businesses in phases based on benchmarks with testing, debts, hospital readiness, and other factors, while others have reopened and are planning to reopen without meeting criteria recommended by the White House. What does all this mean to me? Can you see your friends and family? Can your wedding still take place? Here are some things to think about as you, as you consider your summer plans. Graduations. Many high schools and colleges throughout the country have already held or scheduled online graduation ceremonies in lieu of celebrating in person. Others have decided to postpone in-person ceremonies under a later date. As far as graduation parties go, you should check your state and local laws to determine if a gathering is permissible, and if so, what kind of social distancing accommodations will need to be made. Weddings and large events. If you are planning a wedding or another large event during the summer, you will want to stay in communication with your venue operator and vendors who can let you know if the businesses are allowed to operate. According to Brides.com, wedding planners are recommending that weddings planned through July should likely be postponed. You may also want to look for guidance from your state health department or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, on precautions that should be taken during events to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The CDC has extensive guidance for getting your wedding or mass gatherings events ready and when postponing or canceling an event is recommended. Of course, be sure to check with the state and local law to make sure that your gatherings are permissible under current pandemic-related orders. Get-togethers with families and friends. Summer is usually a perfect time for cookouts and hangouts with family and friends. But what is permissible during the pandemic? This again will depend on where you live and the current orders that are in place. Currently, the CDC advises avoiding gatherings of any size outside of your household, which includes visiting friends' houses, parks, restaurants, or shops. The CDC is clear that teens and younger adults are included in this guidance. However, many states have adopted their own recommendations. The summer of 2020 isn't officially canceled, even though many of the events, festivals, concerts, and attractions you were planning on attending might be. The good news is that, is that most states, parks, lakes, and trails are open, which means you can still enjoy great outdoors while keeping your social distance. Well, you know what? If you, if you can't go to a, a park, what's more important? Taking a chance with your life or going to a park and swinging on a swing? I don't understand People are so worried. They, they want to reopen the economy. They say they have no money. They have no this. They have no that. Yet they're worried about going to restaurants and parks. And get it straight, people. You know, I listen to people like Tommy Laren. That girl, she used to make so much sense. Now she, she thinks because you want to, you worry about your life. You worry about the health of your family. That somehow, all of a sudden, you're a burden on society. I don't get it. I just don't get it. How can you put... This nonsense, these parks, these gatherings, these barbecues ahead of the life of your family, the health of your family. Let's take care of one thing at a time. Let's get over this virus. Let's get it under control. And then we can get our lives back. I don't know what the big question is here. I really don't. All right. 
I have a question for you. You work, you were working, and then this pandemic hit, and then your boss turned around and said, "You know what? I can't afford to keep you on the payroll. I'm gonna have to let you go. But when things when things open up again, I'll hire you back. But sorry, you gotta go. And now you have to go on unemployment. You go on unemployment, and then they come up with this. Uh, you're getting five hundred dollars a week on unemployment, and then you get this stimulus pay that you're getting because of the pandemic. The pandemic pay." Now you're making more on unemployment with the extra the extra six hundred dollars a week plus the five hundred dollars a week than you were making when you were working. Now your boss says, "Hey, we're opening the business again. I want you to come back. Can you turn around and say, i 'I'm not coming back. I'm making more now doing this.' Can you do that? We're going to talk about that next." Do you feel like you want to say, "Take this job and stick it"? Eh, maybe you do. Can you refuse to go back to work and continue to collect unemployment? I found this on Fine Law. It was a blow when your employer laid you off due to coronavirus pandemic back in March. But you're collecting 500 weekly in unemployment checks from your state, and now you're receiving an extra $600 in federal pandemic unemployment assistance, PUA money, from the CARES Act. You're making more money now than you were making when you were working. Even so, in ordinary times, you'd probably welcome a return to regular employment. After all, PUA money runs out July 31st, and your unemployment checks run out later on in the year. But maybe you weren't happy with your job anyway. And then the final clincher, unlike a month or two ago, you're now well aware of how easily COVID-19 is transmitted. Employment is nice, but the threat of severe illness, even that, is not. So can you say no to your employer and continue to receive the checks? Generally, the answer is no. That's not the way unemployment benefits work. What do the Labor Department and OSHA say? The U.S. Labor Department states on its website that if an employee refuses to go back to work, that means the end of their benefits. As soon as the business reopens and the employee is recalled for work, eligibility for PUA would cease unless the individual could identify some other qualifying circumstance outlined in the CARES Act. Federal law requires employers to provide safe workplace for their employees. The Occupational Safety and Health Act, OSHA, has created non-binding guidelines for employers to follow regarding the coronavirus. Again, those are non-binding guidelines. In early April, OSHA issued an interim enforcement plan but followed it with the statement instructing workplace inspectors to use their judgment in determining whether employers are making good faith effort to keep the workplace safe during the pandemic. Thousands of workers have filed complaints to OSHA, but in the absence of more stringent requirements of the type of recommended by the Centers for Disease Control, the outcome of those complaints is anybody's guess. Still, OSHA and st state laws require employers to provide safe working environments, and although a worker can't generally refuse to return to work and continue collecting unemployment, lawyers and state labor officials are indicating that exceptions can be made on a case-by-case -case basis. Going back to work state by state. The first state to lift the business closures on April 24th, Georgia, has not provided much guidance on this question, other than the following statement from Labor Commissioner Mark Butler. If an employee is concerned about returning to work due to exposure to COVID-19, we are encouraging the employees to communicate with their employers on plans to safely return to work. Well, that makes a lot of sense, huh? Later, he said that furloughed workers may be able to continue receiving unemployment but you'll have to show proof of the issue you're having. Other southern states are preparing to follow Georgia's lead in lifting business closures, and at some point, that will be happening in other parts of the country. And no doubt, workers everywhere will be nervous about returning and preferring to continue collecting unemployment as long as they can. Their luck may depend on what state they live in. Gary Burtless, a senior fellow at the Brookings Institute, told Vice News the southern states are more likely to be hard-nosed in dealing with furloughed employees. In some states, I have little doubt that the unemployment insurance agents will respect UI claimants' assessments that the possibility of COVID-19 infection is a legitimate reason for workers to stay home, especially in the cases of workers who have risk factors for COVID-19 mortality, old age, diabetes, etc., he wrote in an email. 
However, in other states, possibly including Georgia, Tennessee, and South Carolina, I would expect the UI agencies to be rather hard-nosed about UI claimants' fears of contracting COVID-19 coronavirus. If you have been called back to work and you're not in a more lenient state, it may be helpful to review what OSHA says about your rights of refusal. If you do not go back to work and feel your workplace is unsafe, you should contact OSHA. An employment law attorney may be able to help you evaluate your options to keep you and your family safe. Well, I want to thank you for stopping by today. And it was a pleasure talking with you. I hope some of this stuff helped you. And I want to tell you, we'll be back again on Monday to talk to you some more. So I want you to have a great weekend. And remember, things can always be worse. No matter what, someone somewhere is wishing that they were in your position right now. So things can always be worse. And also remember, no one ever went blind by looking at something from the bright side. So try to look at things from the bright side. Don't always look at the negative. Look at what's good about something. Okay, my friends. Listen, you've been listening to an apple a day. My name is Jimmy Apple. And remember this too. The best medicine you can take is laughter. I'll talk to you on Monday. Have a great weekend. (laughs) Thanks for listening to An Apple a Day with Jimmy Apple your gateway to a happy, healthy life. Join our community at www.famousapple.com. See you next time.